Hello, and welcome to the Best Games Period. I'm Daniel Jones. I'm flying solo tonight for an honorable mention about a game for the PlayStation 2 called Red Faction. But first, let's talk about what Best Games Period is. It's basically where a show where a couple of guys, uh, myself, typically Jack Gardner and Jeremy Brown, sometimes guests, sometimes not, get together and talk about video games that we think are really great. And we discuss whether or not they are great enough to be considered one of the best games, period. One of the best games of all time, one of the most important. Basically think of it as a Hall of Fame or canon of video games. And you got the best games, period. And that's what this show is. If you're new to the show, welcome. If you're not new to the show, then you know what the honorable mentions are. And the honorable mentions are basically just games that we personally really appreciate and enjoy, but don't necessarily think that they are one of the best games, period, or could even contend to be one of the best games, period. So for that, as I said, I nominate Red Faction. Developed for the PlayStation 2 by Guerrilla Games. Wait. Wow. Boof! I was getting Red Faction Guerrilla confused with Guerrilla Games who developed Killzone and Horizon. Nope. Red Faction was developed by Volition and published by THQ for the PlayStation 2 in 2001. I got Red Faction with my PlayStation 2 when I got my PS2. I have memories of Red Faction. I, Red Faction, ha, you know, I am nostalgic for it. So we're going we're gonna to go down memory lane here. I was a senior in high school, and my sister was dating this guy. He had a PS2. He got one at launch. So, curiously, I, you know, went over and played the the PlayStation, and I think he had, like, Madden, and maybe one other game, and he had Red Faction. And I played Red Faction, and he tried to show me all these other games and Madden and stuff, and I, I really did not care about Madden. Um, I just wanted to play this, this weird little first-person shooter that looked a lot like Half-Life, because I was a big fan of Half-Life. Um, you know, ironically, because my sister's boyfriend prior to this one had introduced me to Half-Life, and uh, now she had a new boyfriend who was introducing me to a game that was a lot like Half-Life, but not as good, um, which is basically how I feel about her boyfriend as well. Like, first one was a really cool guy, and I liked him a lot. Second one that introduced me to half, to Red Faction was kind of a, I don't know, just not the same, you know? Kind of similar, just not the same. That's pretty much what Red Faction was. Whereas I would definitely argue that Half-Life was one of the best first-person shooters of all time, at least up to that point, and I would probably still argue that it is still. Um, Red Faction, I would not definitely not argue that it's one of the best first-person shooters of all time, but it was right up my alley, being that it was so similar and derivative, really, of Half-Life, but boy, um, despite its flaws, it's still a fun game, and I've gone back and, re and replayed a bunch of it on the PS4, because it is available to purchase on the PlayStation 4, if you're curious. Um, it's a fun little time. I mean, uh, you know, it, it does not hold up. It has issues. So let's go back and talk about what Red Faction is, um, how what it's all about. Red Faction, it takes place on Mars, hence the red. Um, <clears throat> it is about a miner Man, I, I did some research, and 
I remembered his name, and now it's it's lost on me. And I have my phone here, and I could look it up, but I'm not going to. Parker. Parker. That's what it is. His name is Parker. And so it's a generic-ass name for a generic white guy protagonist, and he is just the worst. He is awful. He is a terrible protagonist, and I just, you know, I would take Gordon Freeman's silent ass over this douche any day. He is just awful. But anyway, Parker is on Mars as a miner, basically, in a, in a mining colony. Works for a company called Ultor, who basically owns Mars. And they own the rights to mining on Mars so that the companies back on Earth can um, profit and sell energy to everybody on Earth. That's basically what Ultor does. They mine Mars for energy. And you are one of their people mining Mars. And <clears throat> working conditions are awful. Um, and the game goes right into that. I mean, it, that is the setup. Working conditions are bad. The workers are fed up. And they all decide to revolt against this, this corporation. And the corporation is unbelievably well armed. I don't know why. I feel like they're just a mining corporation. They don't need to be that well armed, but you find out that they've been doing all sorts of experiments and and there's a lot more to Altor than than just mining. Um <clears throat> but boy are they well armed and staffed with mercenaries and guards and um, the artificial intelligence of these guards is pretty bad, but we'll get to that. Um, so Parker s essentially becomes the lightning rod, as you can imagine, that sets off this revolution and these people, um, trying to fight for their freedom to get off Mars and, uh, stop mining for this evil company. And that's just... Essentially, all it is. Um, <clears throat> I'm not really going to spoil it. There's not a lot. I, well, I will spoil some things because I want to talk about the ending later. But it's more of a gameplay thing than anything. But from there, what Red Faction really does interesting is Geomod technology, which is what the Red Faction franchise is really known for. Um, that started with the first Red Faction. Uh, Volition... Up to that point, had done some other games. They 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 created the uh, Descent games, I believe, which were similar in tone to Red Faction, but they were for PC. Red Faction was their second console game because um, they had done a game called Summoner for PlayStation Two, which was a launch title for PS Two. I don't think there's a lot of overlap on the teams. I think most of the Summoner team. Um, might have gone on to build Red Faction 2 after Red Faction 1 came out, and Red Faction 2 is not good. Summoner was a okay game. I mean, it was a PS2 launch game, so it wasn't great. It's not the best game, period, but it's okay. Um, Red Faction is really where Volition started to um, do some interesting things. And... All the stuff that, that you see in Red Faction Guerrilla, when that came out, and, and that's that's a widely loved game. That's a game that probably a lot of people would argue is the best game, period. Um, a lot of the things that set that game apart had their foundation in Red Faction 1, the first one. Um, but there's limitations. Because they had to develop it for the PlayStation 2, they had to limit the amount of damage that you could do to the environment. So with the Geomod technology, instead of, you know, having to pick a lock on a door or find a key card for the door, you could just blow a hole through the wall and walk through the wall next to the door. Um, that kind of thing. Or early in the game, there's, there's a moment where there's a tank surrounded by a squad of guys, and they're bad. And you're on a scaffold above them. And they don't see you yet, and you just happen to have gotten a rocket launcher, the scene prior to this, and you can 
walk through the scaffold and fight the tank on the other side of this door. Or the bridge that they're on is a very nice little target for your rocket launcher, or in, and you could just blow that up right in front of them or right under them, and the tank will fall right through the bridge. So you don't have to fight it, which is definitely the better way to go because it actually takes a lot of damage. Um, <clears throat> it's That's cool. That's the kind of stuff that Red Faction does. The problem with Red Faction is that a lot of it is after the first hour or so, where the first hour there's a lot of exploration. You can There's a lot of little secrets and, and secret rooms that you can miss easily. Um, after that, every time you're asked to use the Geomod technology um, is pretty much just when the game wants you to. Um, you don't get to experiment with it the way that, that you can in Gorilla, um, and the way that I think they probably would have wanted you to be able to, but they had to limit your ability to use it. And um, <clears throat> later areas find reasons for you to use it in interesting ways, which is um, one of the things that I do like. Uh, it, it, like I said, this is a very Half-Life style game, so there are a lot of set-piece moments. And like Half-Life, there aren't a lot of boss fights. There's a few. There's a giant worm thing. There's some um, some battles in vehicles, which are kind of cool. Um, but for instance, there's there's a battle against a um, giant robot that is out to kill you. Um, and your your rockets don't really do much damage on it. Um, so you have to be creative, and you have to use the Geomod technology to to destroy it. Um, <clears throat> So it's those kind of things that Red Faction does really well. Um, that's what I always liked about Half-Life is, is that those set-piece moments made you think they were kind of little puzzles instead of being just boss battles. Um, whereas like later in Half-Life, you go to the Zen levels, and I feel like it becomes a regular shooter. Um, Doom clone, as they called them at the time. Um, whereas up to that point, it was not like that. You did not have any standard boss fights, really. Uh, there was a fight against the tank. Why am I talking about Half-Life? But anyway, um, for the most part, in Red Faction, fights go the same way. You have to get creative to um, figure out ways to get around some of the larger enemies in the game. There's also a few stealth sections, too, maybe. Um, and they're terrible. They're really bad, but I don't remember them really being much of a problem. I, they, I don't know. They didn't, they didn't really bother me. Listen, Red Faction is not great, okay? I'm, I'm just saying, Red Faction is not a great game, but it's a, it's a fun shooter. And I, when I'm talking about like shooters, that's the kind of shooter that I really like. I'm a big fan of a single-player, linear shooter that doesn't really take you out of the experience too often. Unfortunately, Red Faction has cutscenes, and they're god-awful. They're real bad. Voice acting's terrible. The enemies, the antagonists are bad. The ally voice acting is real bad. The protagonist is just the worst. The protagonist voice actor, I don't, he might still be working. I don't know who he is. He was real bad. Parker's a, a terrible character. But it's it's a seamless adventure. Um, yeah, there's a lot of load times. Um, but it's a seamless, just like you're off on an adventure, and the whole thing feels like it takes place in an established setting. There isn't much in the way of like establishing moments. Um, like in Half Life, you're not riding on a tram for the first ten minutes, but there's an, there's an establishing cutscene, and from there, there's a lot of environmental storytelling um, that that is done pretty well, I think. Um, <clears throat> you'll you'll come upon barracks where people are just dead. They're not they weren't killed. They just died of starvation. Um, they, oh, some some 
some scenes, I think people killed themselves. Like, it tells the story of what happened, uh, what's been going on on Mars for a long time, and why this revolt has been a long time coming. But Parker just happened to be caught up in the middle of it. And um, it's a seamless adventure from, from start to end. Um, it, it's not broken up into levels or missions. Um, it, it all just kind of flows and makes sense, sort of. Um, much like Half-Life. Much like, I would say, uh, Resistance 3, even though that is split up into missions. But, but I guess it's one of those shooters that relies heavily on set-piece moments and some like puzzle, puzzle solving and storytelling um very not interactive storytelling but environmental storytelling and it you know bioshock you could say it 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 feels like its lineage traces back to half life and um you know, I could draw a line from Half Life to Red Faction to Half Life Two to um, Resistance Three, um, and I say Resistance Three because One and Two don't really do the same thing for me. Um, but I mean, those those are good games. I would also throw Chronicles of Riddick, Butcher Bay in there. Um, there's there's a bunch. Um, and you can kind of draw draw a line through them all. I, I would also include, like, Wolfenstein games, the newer ones. Wolfenstein, Singularity, um, Jeremy loves, loves Singularity. So those kind of shooters are my cup of tea. Except Singularity, it's just, I don't, it's, it's just mediocre. I, don't, I just don't really love media, uh, Singularity. It's, it's mediocre. Listen to our Singularity episode if you want to. But anyway, um... Red Faction is also mediocre. <laughs> like I'm, I'm not saying this is the best game to period. It is an honorable mention. Um, and that's a stretch. But man, I wanted to talk about it because because I just that game came out a few months before half um Halo, and for a period there, I had a PS2 and. Saw Halo and was like, you know, I know this game's like all the rage right now, and everybody's talking about how great it is. But man, Red Faction's better than Halo. And then I actually got an Xbox and played Halo. Or actually, I think my friend had an Xbox and we played through Halo together. Then I ended up buying an Xbox myself because I wanted to play Halo again and Halo 2 once that came out. Um, because fucking Halo's so good. Halo is is exceptional, and it's still exceptional. Uh, that's that game is a ten out of ten. That is a best game period. Uh, listen to our Halo ODST episode. We definitely will do a Halo Combat Evolved episode at some point. I need to get Jack and Jeremy on that one. We need to do it. We that needs to happen soon because Halo is a best game period. It's amazing. And the fact that I ever thought that Red Faction was maybe as good as Halo, I, it's embarrassing. Cause that, that's insane. Going back to play Red Faction now, enemies just bum rush you. Their artificial intelligence is terrible. Either they bum rush you, or they just stand in place and shoot you from wherever they happen to be at the moment. It's awful. And they will tell you where they are because they, they shout out. And it's hard to figure out, like, are they behind me? Sometimes they'll they'll be in another room and they'll be yelling at me. And I won't know, you know, I, I don't know where they are. I can't see them. And then they'll just come through a door and, and attack me. Like, they're, it's real bad. Real bad. And um, you can imagine the cell sections are really bad, too. I will say it's, it's fun to be able to kill basically anybody in that game. Um, you can kill... Bad guys and and good guys, seemingly good guys, uh, willy nilly. I, I think you can do that in Half Life also. 
boots. It's similar to Half-Life 2. I, also. Um, but despite the terrible artificial intelligence and the graphics that have not aged well, um, <clears throat> and the pretty limited arsenal, there there is one really great gun. It's a rail gun that can see through walls and shoot through walls. And it's phenomenal. It's a lot like the rail gun. I think it's a rail, called the rail gun in um, Perfect Dark. Which I was my go to in in the multiplayer um, of Perfect Dark, and and we'll get to the Red Faction multiplayer in a second because it's great, and then we'll wrap up. But first, I want to talk about the ending of Red Faction. Um, so you fight through this resistance, you find out about some experiments Altor is doing and some shit that they want to do. You get to this moment where um, there's a bomb, and uh, your your Trying to disarm the bomb. I don't remember why you're trying to disarm the bomb. I think because you're waiting for um, reinforcements to arrive, basically. People to come and rescue you. And you're with this resistance leader woman. Um, and I can't remember her name. She's basically your friend throughout most of the game. Um, and... Well, about the second half of the game. And you're trying to disarm a bomb. And that's how the game ends, is disarming a bomb in a memory minigame. Um, and that's that's it. That's how it ends. It doesn't end with a giant boss fight. It ends with a long, kind of cool chase sequence up to this bomb. Um like a cutscene. There is well there is there is a little boss fight before the bomb, but it's it's not I didn't feel like it was much of a boss fight. And then and then you have to disarm this bomb. And that's it. And that's how it ends. And if you disarm the bomb then when you finish the game. And I remember feeling like that was incredibly intense and that I think I might have failed it the first time and then then finally got it. Um and I didn't think it was that bad. I've heard that people hate that puzzle at the end because it's just so random. And it is random. It's totally random. But it seems, to me, it seemed to fit. Because that's what Red Faction did. Like all of those kinds of games, it's constantly got you doing something different every 20, 15 minutes or so. And that's that's what it does. And so it's fitting that it would end on something that was completely out of left field that you've never done before. And it's kind of silly, but it worked for me. And I loved it. I remember finishing that game and thinking, wow, I can't believe they, f they ended it that way. I was probably kind of stupid at the time. I don't know that I would have loved it now. But at the time, I thought it was really badass and, and ballsy. I just thought it took guts to, to end the shooter with a puzzle, memory puzzle sequence. I, I thought it was great. Um, so once you do that, the game's over. Then you can extend your playtime with the multiplayer, which actually got some time out of. Um, at the time, of course, it was early PS2, so it was only a local multiplayer game. I believe it was four-player. Pretty sure it was. Um, a lot of the maps were reminiscent of, like, GoldenEye maps. They were very claustrophobic, very, very tight maps. Um, but they had the one special twist, which was the Geomod technology, which in the multiplayer, the Geomod technology was actually really cool. And you could do some cool stuff. With it. There was one map that was similar to, um, oh man, this map in Unreal Tournament, where you have these two bases on each side of the map, a lot like Blood Gulch in, in Halo, um, the classic kind of style where you have the two bases on each side of the map. And you're but the thing about this this on on Red Faction is that you could you could basically just blow up 
every platform that your enemy could even stand on. Um, if if you're just um standing and and you just it it's I, it's hard to describe. But whereas other ones, other games, rockets just leave a crater that that doesn't like a mark. They just leave a mark. In Red Faction, they leave a legitimate crater that um if you continue to do it long enough you could really just tunnel from one end of the map to the other um if you really were so inclined and i've done that i've i've sat there and built a tunnel in red factions multiplayer just without any bots or any other people wanted to build a tunnel so it did um and i had a lot of time on my hands apparently but that's that's what you could do in Red Faction multiplayer, and that's what kind of set it apart. It was neat. It wasn't great, but it was neat. And they had the, there was one level that was reminiscent of the scene in The Matrix where Trinity and Neo are in the lobby and they're fighting the the, the famous lobby fight in in The Matrix, um, with the columns just being torn to shreds by the bullets. You can do that in Red Faction and tear these columns to shreds. Unfortunately, these are apparently load-bearing columns, so you couldn't, like, blow a column completely out and just bring the roof down. This wasn't, you know, this wasn't battle, uh, Battlefield 4. Um, but you could just, I, you could just stand in this, this lobby and blow up these columns as much as possible, and it just looked really cool. It looked cool. There were other spots where you could blow out a wall um, to get to your opponent quicker and, and find uh, hidden caches of, of ammo and special weapons. So those kind of things um, made made the Red Faction multiplayer more than just a little novelty. I, I enjoyed it. It was fun. Uh, again, Red Faction does not hold up. Go play it on the PS4 if you want to. I got it on the Humble Bundle um, a while back. They did it again this summer. They might do it again some other time soon. Um, but it, it's worth what I paid for uh, in the Humble Bundle. Um, and I think I paid like $5 to get that and a bunch of other things. And um, it it's it's a fun game. It's worth, worth that. Um, so, so check out Red Faction sometime. I don't know. Um, also, check out the other episodes of The Best Games Period. I promise they are more exciting than this one because there's other people talking than just me. Um, you know, Jack and Jeremy are a lot more entertaining than, than I am. Our guests are a lot more insightful than any of us are. Um, so go back and see... Listen to some of our older episodes. You can find them on iTunes and SoundCloud and Libsyn, our hosting sites, as well as on community.extra-life.org and gameinformer.com. You can find us on Twitter at Best Games Period, and you can find us on Facebook, facebook.com slash bestgamesperiod. You can also support us on Patreon, patreon.com slash bestgamesperiod. One dollar a month will get you extra content, which is really cool. And I promise it's better content than what this just was. I promise, I swear. But also, I said you can find us on community.extra-life.org. You should also check out extra-life.org and extra life for what Extra Life is. And what is Extra Life? Extra Life is a charity for the Children's Miracle Network Hospitals, which is 100% of the funds from the charity go towards the Children's Miracle Network Hospitals and kids in need, kids who need it, and is the big day once a year where, where Extra Life really celebrates um, and tries to get gamers together to raise money for kids with 
any all types of ailments and on that day um, or any time throughout the year that you raise money for extra life you can choose where that money goes and it it's all up to you I donate to the local hospital in Hartford Connecticut because that's my local hospital but you can donate to the one near you or you can donate to one where you know where somebody um, specifically could use some help. Um, <clears throat> you can do a huge marathon um, like I'm hoping to do this year to stream video games and, and um, try to raise money for the kids and Extra Life and the Children's Miracle Network. Or, or you can just watch other people's streams. I know Game Informer is doing a big one. I think Jack's going to be involved in that. It's a lot of fun every year when they do that. It's really cool. So, so either way you want to do it, just sign up. Any money you can raise is good. It doesn't matter. But also, check out the best games period anytime. Leave us a review on iTunes, whatever. Till next time, folks. Oh, also, there was a poll this past week for Illbleed. Illbleed is not a best games period, and it was not voted as such, unfortunately. Sorry to our guests who nominated it, but the listeners spoke and decided it was not a best games period, unfortunately. But anyway, till next time, see you all on the flippity Thank you.